Hi, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs. This is Roguelike Tutorial. Am I still under the weather? Yes. It's way too early. It's not early at all. Anyways, um, yeah, this is Roguelike. Um, the last time around we had uh, been working on this. We had uh, just implemented the throwing. Like we had just implemented the eating. And now we want to do the throwing. Um, but, yes, you can tell... Um, it's not finished yet. So, so today we're gonna finish this up. Easy like pie. So we already see when we're drawing the thing, there is a bit of an issue here where, where is it? Draw game. Yeah, yeah. We're drawing a line and we don't know how too long to draw this line. Where do we draw? the line to what is our destination where what are we going to actually hit when we throw now so uh, what i want to add now is a, um, a function that kind of like figures out what we're going to hit if we throw something right just like a function that is like throw something and then it returns the tile that it will hit um, that whatever you throw will hit um, so let's go to gameplay because it's gonna be a gameplay thing and we're gonna call this function Throw tile it's a tile is it a tile is a tile that you that you will throw things at I will be I will be there is a another window open in the side where I'm like occasionally uh, glance over ah interesting mm. oh mm. okay Good. So um, we're gonna have like two variables, tx and ty, and these are gonna be at the starting position of our throw. So we're gonna go um, pmob.x and right pmob.y. Okay, so these are the starting positions. And so actually, it's not that difficult. I just the only thing I'm gonna be doing now is just I'm gonna loop. I'm gonna like keep moving in the direction that that we are throwing and uh, always check the next tile if it's walkable and if we find a tile that's not walkable anymore we go like aha that's our tile that that's that gets gonna get hit by our throw so we're gonna use a repeat until a loop here repeat so there's uh, maybe this is worth talking about so there's repeat until and there's another one that is um while do so while something something do and and repeat until uh, these are two loops two types of loops while true do and repeat until true um, they're basically the same whereas you, you have like a start and like in the first time thing you have like starting and then like ending condition and the second one you have first a conditioning and then it's like you know um, you you define where the loop ends and they're basically they're siblings they're doing the same thing, um, but slightly different. Uh, in the repeat until, you have the condition at the end of the loop. So you always go through the loop at least once. Um, and for the while uh, loop, you have the condition at the beginning of the loop. So um, in some cases, you never actually go through the loop even once. <laughs> it's I kind of like that there's like this flexibility here. But in this case, we want to go through this loop at least once. We want to, you know, you can't be a situation where you throw the, the thing at your feet. You always want to throw a little bit. So tx plus equals, um, now we have like this variable where we show, where we store um, in kind of like the x and y change, Let's th throw dx and throw dy. So we're gonna add these um, boogers in here. And then, um, so now we have to figure out, okay, where are we going to actually end? That's difficult. I'm gonna go in bounds tx ty equals false. Well, actually, we don't need that tip technically. Yeah. Because the walkable is already doing this. But yeah, we would be checking if it's in bounds. Um, is walkable tx ty. And we also wanna check mob, check for mobs here. Check mob. until not 
right? Because it is walkable, also takes care. I like. I, I'm like. <laughs> this is bad that I'm checking my previous code because previously I had like inbounds in here, but actually, in, in, is walkable also checks for inbounds. So it's just like if it's walkable, and if there's a mob in there or it's any kind of tile that is not walkable, then that means that we hit something here. In this case, we're going to return tx and ty. New thing, new thing. We return two variables. Separated by a comma. How does that work? Well, uh, in Lua, I, I learned, in Lua, uh, functions can return two values. They can return two values. That's crazy. Uh, you know, because previously I would do something like, okay, we'll return an array of values. And then, you know, on the other hand, I will just receive one array and unpack that array. But you can actually return two separate values. Um, and the way you receive them is like we would do something like x comma y equals throw tile. So we use like this multiple assignments in one line that we use like for example here where if a tx ty equals pmop um, x pmop y. We use the same like multiple assignment trick, but instead of having like two things on the, on the other side of the equation sign, we only have one uh, function, but that the function returns two values. So in this case, you know, x would get tx and y would get ty. So that's kind of like a cool trick of making functions being, be, them being more flexible. Okay, so this is like a little tiny little function that kind of like throws a tile for us. So that's great. We can now use this um, to draw a line to the actual target of where we're throwing. So let's let's just save the, the target uh, real quick here. So it's going to go something like local tx ty equals throw tile. Good. Um, we noticed that this is um, this is making us kill ourselves. Well, let's not make him jokes about uh, about suicide. This is, uh, makes us very unhappy. Post a lot of unhappy faces in <laughs> in Snapchat. I don't know. Um, um, because there's like a huge equation. So we, if we are going to use any position of where we start drawing our throw line and where we end drawing our throw line, we want to have this calculation just once and one, one time only. So let us create a bunch of variables that, um, that take care of it. So basically this line x, y, one line, one, so like one is always the starting position, two is the ending position, and it's gonna be x and y for each one of those. Um, so we're just gonna grab this, I'm gonna put them underneath each other, and then later on, when, when we're done with this function, I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna put them all in one uh, in one uh, one line. Something like this. Rock of us, Mr. Porter. I'm not sure if this is correct. Probably not. Um, I'm gonna just copy it either way, just just so we can have it. Uh, And then we plug in all those things into the, our, our line. Mm, 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 mm. Two and y2, like this. So now let's fix this for for now. So I think the four is actually not good. I took it, I like if at close inspection, I, I, it kind of like, I think it looks more centered if it's plus three. So this is okay. Um, now this is not good. Instead of the mob x, we're gonna have to go tx and ty because it's the target tile. Uh, times three is okay, but then then we're gonna add the three as well. Let's try this. Uh oh, it didn't work. Something is not working. The throw tile might be um, putting us into like an infinite loop situation. This would happen if throw x dx and throw dy were zero, and they are. Ha. So you see now you see the line actually going to to the destination tile. That's good. 
and this, you see it's being stopped by a, um, a door. Let's see if it gets stopped by a mob. I want to see that. It does not. Which is bad. Did I misspell check mobs? Is it check mobs or check? Let's let's see if it's check mobs maybe. Oh, you didn't see me. I'm here. Okay, now it gets it works. Okay, so we're gonna get stopped by the mob. That's good. Uh, maybe one last thing I want to check is um, if what happens if I throw it outside of the screen. That's that's, that's would be would be interesting. So like this. Okay, it works. Like, like, moves out. Good. <clears throat> not gonna lie, this is not a good looking line. <laughs> it's just not. It's just like not very beautiful. <clears throat> But you know we're gonna we gonna we can we can work on this now. So what I want to do now is I want the line to be slightly dotted, um, um, and so we are gonna use a pretty brand new function that Pico8 has where you can um, set a fill with a pattern, a fill with a pattern. So we're gonna go fill p is is how we call this. Um, so this cell sets a fill pattern. That fill pattern applies to a lot of the like objects of, of the shapes that you can draw and it's basically like a bit number um, so you might be like you can write just like a number in pico8 right like you just have, can can write numbers but there's like a very specific um, uh, spelling or um, spe specific way of writing out binary numbers so you know you know binary numbers where it's like um, you know one zero is zero one is one but zero one is two um, it's binary, right? So, you know, it's it's kind of like, instead of like having numbers go from z um, zero to nine, the numbers go from zero to one. So um, the next digit is kind of like, you know, um, the next, um, how do you call it? Um, square? Is it square? No, wait, the, the, oh my, this is, this is way too early for binary. <laughs> anyway, it's just like a sequence of zeros and ones. And it, con it can be converted to a number, like a regular looking number. <laughs> Um, the way you s write binary numbers in, in Pico8 or Lua, I guess, is you go 0b and then a sequence of numbers. So it's like, well, you know, something like this. That's going to be a binary number and that bin number gets converted into a, like just a normal, like it's, it's a number. I'm not sure what number it is. I'm, I'm like not, not good enough in binary. And so the way you do fill patterns is you, um, you give uh, them a binary number and the zeros and ones encode like the pattern. It's gonna be like a dithering pattern that we're having here. How do we arrive at like, how do we know what kind of pattern we're using? Well, for this, there's actually some really good tools that the Pico8 community has made. So let me show you one real quick. Look at this. Ta-da! So this is, um, uh, this is called Philp Visualization by uh, Breeks. And if you just look for, for it in Lexilophil, then you will find this. So this is this allows you to, to create your own fill pattern. So you see a, like a beautiful preview of those as well. Let me maybe zoom in a little bit. Can you zoom in? Could I please? Would it be possible if it was any? I guess I cannot zoom in. I'm not sure why though. Usually it's like, okay, I guess you're not zooming in today. Um, anyways, so um, yeah, this is like a tool and you, you can like um, set, like change the, the bits here to kind of create different patterns. And you can like um, set bits from zero to one to see like uh, what kind of result it has. Generally when there's one, it will be one color and if it's zero, it's gonna be like the other color basically. Uh, and you can see, you can also toggle transparency um, because there's two different types of, of drawing like this. One type is um, you draw, you alternate between a color and transparency. And the other one of drawing is you alternate between two colors. Um, I'm not sure how, I have to figure out how to make the other color work. So, you know, we're gonna create, um, here's how you, we're gonna create a pattern. 
Um, and the way I want to have like a dithered, like a dotted pattern on, on my line is basically creating a pattern like this, where it's just like a checkers pattern basically. So it doesn't matter in which direction we draw the line, uh, it will get it will get dotted. And then we're gonna f invert that, that, that pattern um, and just keep animating the inversion. So it will see, look like, you know, like Christmas lights where every second light, light is, is turning on and off. And so it looks like it's as if the lights are wandering across the, the wire. That's that's basically the, the idea that we're trying to pull off. Um, we're not going to use transparency. Instead, of we're going to draw between black and um, and a color, in our case, white. So um, it, the line will actually cover everything underneath, so we see the dots very clearly, so it doesn't melt with the background. That's our our goal here. So let's go back here. Let me set up real quick again because I broke everything here. All right. So let me start. Um, I have to like like just like copy the sequence of zeros and ones and it's gonna be perfect if it's wrong then everything's gonna be for naught so let's not do that good good this is this is now this is beautiful now um so let's see if this works it works it's beautiful isn't it the best? Um, there's one little detail, and uh, now of course comes the tweaking. So there's one little detail, it's like, you see that um, in between there's um, dark pixels, so there's like alternate between white and dark, so that's great. Um, but I want to have like a, like a kind of an outline situation where it's like, yeah, so the pixels in between the white pixels are black, but to the left and right of the line, or in this case up and down of the line, it's it's like melts with the, with the yellow, for example, of our character. So I don't like that. It would be nice if they, everything was really nice and, and like it was like this nice outline effect going on. And the way for us to do this is um, we're just gonna draw two black lines above and below the line. Now, this is a bit weird because how do you, like above and below is only if you're drawing, throwing sideways, but if you're throwing vertically, it's gonna be left and right. So how are we going to pull this off? Uh, it's it's uh, it, we're gonna, just going to switch y and and x for the. Th it's let let me just show you real quick. So it's going to be like something like th throw. Um, let me see. Um, it was I forgot what the name of the variable is. Throw the x. Yeah, that's fine. So we're going to add throw the y. The y to the x. So it's kind of like we're moving in the opposite direction that we're throwing at, like in the perp perpendicular direction that we're throwing at. And we're gonna add the throw x to, to the thing. Y and x. And you know, you can already tell this is a lot of tokens for really, not that really exciting effect, like not that big of an effect. And you know, I'm, I'm a, I think we could pull this off a similar effect if you use a rectangle instead, and that might be might be a way to save some tokens here. But let's let me just like get something running first, and then we can think about the optimization later. Oops. Um, so in the second line, we subtract the the same amount from the line. All right. So let's try that. So you can see now there's like this uh, this uh, this uh, um, black outline around the the line. It's it looks a lot more substantial. Now there is still some issues here. So now of course like the there's like the line syncs up awkwardly with some of the outlines um, with the tiles. So sometimes the outline looks thicker than it actually is. And also the outline now covers our own character. So I don't like that either. So that's a bit bad. Mm, let's try to fix that. Something we can do here is for example we can um, add the throw dx times four so the line doesn't begin at the center of our character but actually you know in the throw direction four pixels along the throw direction so it's actually uh, you know it kind of starts at the at the end of our sprite not at the at the center of our sprite uh, so let's let's see how that works yeah that looks a lot better sometimes it still overlaps our character but i think that's that's gonna be fine 
Okay, so as I said, um, um, I wanted to like. There's two things I want to be doing. I want to animate the this this uh, this line right now. It's like the static line. It looks a bit dead. Um, and also, I wanted to add a um, like a cross somewhere, like a like indicator of where we what we're gonna hit. So it's kind of like clear because right now the line kind of like just like peers out. You know, like if if, if you throw this, it's just like ends. Uh, un unceremon unceremoniously, it would be nice if it were, there was some kind of indicator here. So let's do the indicator here. We got, we're gonna, we're gonna, ch we're gonna be so cheap about this. We're just gonna do the O print. You remember O print uh, tools? Uh, we had like this um, O print eight um, that was um, drawing a text with an outline. We're gonna use the same feature. <laughs> we're gonna go O print uh, plus. We're just gonna draw a little plus. <laughs> where we're gonna throw at. I think that's gonna be enough. If you really want to, you can use a sprite here. You can draw like a beautiful, you know, throw indicator. I'm not sure. Can I can I pull one off? But you know, that would require like a pal T and everything. Like something like this would be maybe good. I was trying to come up with some, but I thought the plus was okay enough, and it's it's it gets us gets the job done. That's the most important thing. So it's gonna be L X two. L Y two. That's the coordinates of the end of the line. That's always the coordinates where the, um, you know, where the, where the line is going to end up. And it's going to be seven. Um, so again, white with black outlines. Let's see how this looks. Probably it's not going to look nice, but we're going to tweak, tweak this. Oops, there's a problem here. Uh, it's supposed to be open eight. Sorry. Um, yeah. So it has to be go like three pixels up. So it's going to be minus three. Nope, uh, minus two. Better. And then um, in the X position, minus one. Good. Looks beautiful. Um, now the only problem is like it, it's it kind of disappears when you're throwing it off screen because it's kind of like in the center of the tile off screen. So what I want to do here is we could do like a mid function here, um, right here where it's like, we could put it probably up, up, um, should we do this? Uh, might 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 just as well, not do it down here, but actually here, uh, when we're calculating the coordinates, we're make, gonna make sure that the coordinates are somewhere on the screen. Doesn't make sense to make this here though. Let's try this. Mid zero, 127. So we're gonna make sure that the coordinates are on the screen. And again, the mid function we already talked about it. It picks like a middle number. So if ever our coordinates are um, smaller than zero or greater than 127, it will pick zero or 127 as the middle number. And so, you know, it kind of like restrains the, um, the coordinates, the, this value, this equation within zero and 127. It's kind of like, like a little trick. So let's see how that looks. See, now it's kind of like nice on the edge of the screen. Cool. Um, Okay, so um, the animation. How about that animation, right? So what we want to do here is we want to flip. We want to flip. Sometimes we want to draw this. Sometimes we don't want to draw this. Um, so um, the solution I, well, I I thought about is something like if um, let's say t. Uh, this divided by two. So t is like this little timer that runs all the time. And modulo two is, means like every second frame. Modulo two equals equals zero is like every second frame. You have this fill and otherwise you have this other fill else and like so. And then the other fill is I have to like now we, we have to like have the inverted um, inverted pattern and again I'm typing it up um, you can use the pattern designer to create your own patterns that's fine like this so let's try this so now it's too fast you can you can tell this is too fast so let us now like divide by seven 
and it also needs to now be a floor so we don't have like any comma values so let's try that okay so now you see kind of like this nice little animated pattern and you know depending on like this like the one of those optical illusions sometimes looks like it goes to the left or sometimes it goes to the right you kind of have to convince your eyes that you're <laughs> what you're looking at okay so now we have like this little indicator here um is there anything else let me see what if i have any other yeah there's something oh yeah you might have noticed do you see that our our uh, health indicator that is also having like this animation now <laughs> which might be fun that might be something that you were into like if this is like a christmas game maybe it looks like christmas lights um, but uh, yeah but if you um, if we run this function again we um we um, clear the pattern now okay so only only thing for me left to do is i'm gonna mark this as a star here i think we could save some tokens here and especially here as well and if you put everything up here in one line we would also save a bunch of tokens probably good so the only i think for us left to do is to actually do the throw function but this fun this episode is actually going for a long time already so you know let's let's do this actual throwing um, in the next episode where we're actually gonna uh, think about you know what happens when we throw food at an enemy what happens when um, when we throw like a ninja star at an enemy like different things should happen um, we actually already have most of the stuff in place and then that's probably gonna be like the half of the next episode and the next half is gonna be maybe us going through over th over some uh, optimizations maybe f tweaking some of the UI stuff so again, uh, the code for this is going to be at the uh, doobly-doo of this episode. And uh, yeah, you can get some t-shirts on the t-shirt store, which I, you should definitely get. Not the one like here, but really cool ones. And um, you should check out the Discord, where people are discussing this game and they're having some really good discussions. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>